some of I feel that law enforcement overall in the city itself, they 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 choose this. Uh, like I said, we all have different lanes in life. You know, uh, most of us are traumatized by law enforcement from a kid, from the Daryl Gates era all the way to today. So a lot of us are traumatized by law enforcement. And sometimes I feel that they pick and choose who's the good guy, who's the bad guy in their eyes. Just because I might not can't afford to have certain clothes on, I might can't afford, I might choose to, 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 to hang with my neighbors. You know what I mean? On my side of town, we don't got them nice clubs or bars and we don't have that stuff over there. So we congregate at the park. So you know why? We all met on a, on a, on a, on a, on a sports program at the park. You know, they call us a gang. But how are we gangbangers if my mama and they mama was friends and they mama babysitted me and I met her son growing up as kids? There's a lot of us that got 30, 40 year relationships that people that we still see from elementary school. A lot of people that's called themselves quote unquote civilians don't have relationships with guys and girls they went to school with in third, fourth grade. We have us to do have that. And by some time they see us, they call us gangs. And I feel that certain police officers are always one of the punk a mask of the male in high school, but never could do it. But once they got that badge and that gun, they live in a fantasy to be able to bully a person that they never could bully in school. That's deep, Perry. I, I, I have not heard that um, in the four plus years we've had this program, but I want to stay on that for a moment. Let's, 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 let's talk about that for a little bit. You're talking about some officers that you've known since grade school and high school. And do they live in the community still? No, one does, but they, but they never came outside and played with nobody. The officer that was the community in the hood, they never played with their neighbors. They mama kept them in the house. They can't play freeze tag with us. They wouldn't play a touch football in the streets with us. They wanted to. But they, by, by them not being able to play with us, they don't have no real community ties. They, sometimes their parents kind of shield them off because their mom, quote unquote, might have had a job. Maybe they had two working parents and mine didn't. So they, they let their kids play with us. So they don't really got no real community ties like the people who play together. So I want to listen. I'm, I, I want to recap what you said. You said childhood trauma, and we can talk about trauma while we're on this call because trauma is real, experienced by the community and experienced by the law enforcement community. But for you to say that some of the poor treatment is downright personal, right? It's personal. It's personal. We have heard since that incident with George Floyd that those two knew each other. Right, right, right. At a bar. At a bar. And it was personal. Personal. One has a gun and the authority and the other doesn't. I see I see Lenise shaking her head. Yes, I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak in, in a moment. But, Perry, thank you for that. Thank you very much. I, I want to say one thing. Go ahead. You know, men are hunters by nature. We are natural hunters. So sometimes that law enforcement is out there doing a job he don't understand he had the hunter instincts. He trying to take me down like a wild buffalo. He might see a big black man the same way as like having a lion's head on his wall. Brandon now, right. Now it's interesting that you say that, Perry, because you just said men. Are you saying that the, the predominance of the issues between community residents and law enforcement are with male members of law enforcement? Most of the time, most of the time. It's, it's never read really a female. I never ever encounter a, a woman officer being disrespectful. And always the male officer wants to take the lead and be the uh, dominance in the conversation. Thank you for that. Thank you. I want to share this with you before we get to um, Dushanti. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, but I want to share this with you. We, we've had juvenile probationers participate in Game Changer on a regular basis. We've even had currently incarcerated juveniles participate in Game Changer. And they echoed what Perry just said. They said they'd rather get arrested by a female officer than a male officer. They would rather get arrested by a female officer than a male officer. 
Not to say that they're not getting arrested because they are getting arrested, but they said that female officers give them the opportunity to speak. They listen to them. They'll hear them out. And they don't manhandle them. They don't slam them to the ground. So I, I just wanted to share that with you since Perry brought that up. And what Perry was also talking about is, is profiling. Black males out of park, hanging out with one another, not necessarily a gang. The way Perry described it is we've known each other for a long time. And we met at that park. So thank you for that, Perry.